to worship. Uh, again, we thank the uh, band of songsters. I hope you sell, as you sat there listening, you've uh, already felt the presence of the Lord this morning as we've started our worship time together through the music they have brought to us. Um, please do take a copy of the weekly bulletin if you don't use uh, Facebook. It's actually quite a busy month in June. There's quite a lot of events of various types happening, so please do have a look through there. Um, Forward-looking on uh, Tuesday, and then this week on Wednesday from 2.30 until Thursday at 1 p.m., um, not overnight, but uh, on those days, um, SBNS, the Salvation Army shop, will be here for that uh, uh, period of time, so if there's anything you think you might need, you never know, they might have it, um, then uh, come along and uh, come along and have a look um, uh, during the times that on Wednesday and Thursday. Next Saturday, normally would have been yesterday, but next Saturday is the change of date for the coffee morning, so again come along, enjoy fellowship together over uh, coffee and cake on Saturday morning between 10 and 12. And then on uh, Sunday, uh, weather permitting, the band will be presenting a uh, concert of music, of Christian music in Western Park at three, o'clock, uh, at three o'clock on the bandstand. So if you're free, hopefully the weather will be like this. If you're free next uh, Sunday afternoon, or you know people who might enjoy an hours of music, um, Western Park next Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. So there's all sorts of other things going on. Uh, the walk, uh, forward-looking trip. Cliff's got tickets for the latest uh, Salvo concert with uh, David Dawes. I will put all the dates onto the Facebook page, so uh, please do have a look at those. And then um, just the news about uh, people who we continue to pray for. Uh, just an update on uh, Gillian. Gillian is now out of hospital and is staying with her sister. But two. Daughter. 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 She's staying with a daughter. Sorry. Um, she's staying with a daughter. So please do uh, continue to remember Gillian in your prayers and I guess a daughter as well. Um, while she's. Uh, <laughs> While she's, uh, while she's looking after her during this, uh, now, uh, after her stay in the hospital. And then hopefully you will have uh, picked up on the uh, prayer mobile. In the last couple of days, uh, we prayed for uh, Becca's brother-in-law and for the whole of the family. Um, uh, brother-in-law's was diagnosed with MNS, MS, <laughs> MS this week. Um, so uh, please do remember <coughs> Becca's brother-in-law and I say her sister and nieces and the family at this time. Oh, it's their wedding anniversary today as well, but having to celebrate it in hospital. So uh, please do especially remember them in your prayers. And then uh, just finally, obviously looking further ahead, you'll see their note on the um, back of the book. Oh, we won't if you don't read it, but Saturday the 6th of July at 2.30 there was an informal uh, farewell for Majors Carl and Michelle, I own and Caleb, um, were invited to come and join in that time. It would be a faith uh, farewell tea, afternoon tea, um, and uh, you're invited to bring a plate of food, savoury or desserts, but just for planning purposes if you are coming, we can let Angela or Liz know and then I guess we can try and fill in the gaps for that, but that's uh, Saturday the 6th of July at 2.30. Thank you very much for listening and we look forward as uh, we worship together now. Good morning. Well, that's just five weeks away now. I'm starting to panic a little bit. Um, just a further announcement. Um, this week we have uh, the SPNS Roadshow with us on the 5th and the 6th, that's Wednesday and Thursday. Did he? Oh, he was so busy trying to send me the announcement to announce it that we missed the announcement. So, there we go. Well, just given the right date, so it doesn't matter, they were listening, we weren't. <laughs> he was so busy trying to make sure I got the right information that we've actually missed it. Um, Carl and I will also be away for a couple of days this week, as it is our silver wedding anniversary. 
Yes, I know. I've put up with him that long. <laughs> and he has put up with me that long too. So uh, that's the announcements for this week. We're going to uh, continue our worship this morning by standing and singing together song number 73, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
focusing on Philippians 4 and he invites us to look forward. But the best place to look when we are thinking about the future is towards Jesus, isn't it? Uh, Somebody asked me a few weeks ago, what does your self-care look like? And I said to them, giving myself the permission just to deal with what's in front of me in that moment. Just giving myself permission to deal with what is in front of me in this moment. Because if I look back, there's a lot to process there. And if I try to look forward, there is so much going on that it could create anxiety or I could feel overwhelmed. Uh, There's joy in it. There's sorrow in it. There's so much that can happen over the next few months. And so just having permission to sit in the moment, as we were saying the other week, holding the moment. But most importantly is in that moment keeping your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. It's Jesus who grounds us, isn't it? I know we, um, you know, I was training as a mental first aider a few weeks ago and they were teaching us all these grounding techniques to be present with somebody in the middle of uh, anxiety and panic. But uh, the one thing that grounds me more than anything else is Jesus. Keeping my eyes firmly fixed upon him. It was my uh, grandma's birthday yesterday. She's with the Lord now. But uh, she always used to say to me, keep your eyes upon Jesus. It was always the last thing she used to say when we said goodbye. And it was the first thing she used to say if I went to her for advice. Keep looking unto Jesus. He holds us. Buzzing and it's going through the microphone. Uh, He holds us and he keeps us. So we're going to sing together that beautiful chorus, To Be Like Jesus. This hope possesses me in every thought and deed. This is my aim, my creed, to be like Jesus. This hope possesses me. His spirit helping me like him I'll be. Looking to him, following him for his example, trusting him, allowing him to be the person that uh, helps us in our thinking processes, helping, asking him and modelling ourselves on him as we live out our spiritual experience so that we, we can not only be grounded in him but can be a light in the world in which we live. So let's sing together to be like Jesus. Let's pray. 
Father God, we come to worship. And there are so many things that we need to bring before you. There are those that we love and care for who are going through struggles at the moment. We place them before you on the altar and say, here it is, it is yours. There are plans that we have, our dreams, our aspirations, our goals. And we place them on the, be on the altar and we say, this is yours. There are fears that we have for ourselves, our health, our finances, our careers, and so many different things, Father God. We place them on the altar and we say, this is yours. There are things that we see on the news and they trouble and concern us. Elections, both here and abroad, wars around the world, and we see the fear and the devastation. And this morning, as we come to worship, we place it all on the altar and we say, here, this is yours. It is yours because it is beyond our control. It is yours because everything about us is yours. It is yours because this is a safe place to put these things. It is yours because your Holy Spirit hovers over them and intercedes. And where we can't find utterance for our prayers, then the Holy Spirit brings them before you. All these things are yours. This beautiful family, this core, this congregation, this community, we lay it on the altar and we say, it's yours because it has you written all over it. And we just pray that in giving these things to you, on placing them on the altar, you will bring breast blessing and you will bring peace, you will bring deliverance and you will bring strength. We offer it all to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The songs is going to sing.
past one of my favourite songs that songsters are singing at the moment, <laughs> articulated better what I was trying to say earlier, about when you stand on the rock, you can still really clearly, can't you? It gives you a better perspective of everything that's going on around you. So, stand on Jesus. Uh, just to confirm, Liz and I abs- actually witnessed yesterday that Ross Matz did get married. <laughs> and we, were sat, uh, we were stood here on... Uh, Friday, preparing the hall, and uh, Victoria's sister, I still can't believe it's happening, she says. We've waited all this time, but it did actually happen. They had a a lovely day. It was very intimate. There was just 18 of us here. Um, Liz, obviously, in her official capacity as registrar, and uh, just a very small party, but it was lovely to see the children playing in the garden afterwards and then having some uh, family time at which point we retreated and let them enjoy it but uh, it actually happened and they were very grateful for your uh, gift as well very grateful we're going to sing another song together continuing uh, on from where we were singing to be like Jesus this song says oh to be like thee blessed redeemer it's song 618 in the songbook It's up there on the screen, and we're going to stand to sing again. But at the end of our uh, song, Judith is going to come and read to us from Scripture, and then the band will play. Let's stand to sing.
Bible reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, this is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal, your loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have re renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to, be, to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in, every, in, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with, with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ep Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints <coughs> in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. <coughs> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.
God, we give thanks for your presence in our lives. Bless these offerings that we may be used to advance your kingdom and glorify your name. And may our faith continue to grow stronger each day, bringing us closer to you. Amen. Just before I open God's word, let me reassure you, I know it was a long Bible reading, but it, it, it was right, okay? It was right. I know some of your faces were going, you know, so it was right. But let us sing the song again that simply says, uh, Jesus is Lord, creation voice proclaims it. We will sit and sing this one through, please, Bandmaster, thank you. you're okay that was Charlie we're not sending the boys out for Charlie because she'll beat you up she will well this morning I feel I've got to be on my best behavior I know Norman it's really hard to try this because yesterday I had the privilege of joining with my sessional friends after 25 years of ministry and we spent the day together at the training college which was a real blessed time real time of fellowship but I didn't know that one of my tutors would turn up this morning. Hi, Carol. Yeah, behave yourself. <laughs> it's good to see Major Carol Richards with us. She's friends of Cliff and Bart. And um, she was a very good tutor. She was. She was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. One book ahead. Just, just one. 
Uh, but no, it's good to see you, Carol, and uh, you bring back some good memories of my time in college. It was a bit weird this week. I sat in my, my office and I, I, I said to myself, what can I do for Sunday? Because technically, this will be my last Sunday preach, I think. Thanks for the encouragement, eh? I know, it's sad, isn't it? But I'm looking forward to hearing Michelle next week, aren't we? Oh, that fills me with confidence, doesn't it? And, and do you know, sometimes when you sit there... Yeah. When you, sometimes you sit there and you're going to yourself, what can I preach about this Sunday? God, I really need some inspiration from you. And God said, put your arms out. So I went like this and he said to me, look forward. And guess what came up? Philippians chapter 4. So that's what I'm going to preach about. Now I'm going to reassure you, for me to attempt a whole of the chapter in, in the 45 minutes that we've got left, <laughs> I think I would be struggling. You'd at least need 55 minutes for me to do the whole chapter. So what I'm going to do is, and the reason I've given the whole chapter out is to put it back into some context, because I'm going to pick some verses out of this and use those verses. But when you look at Philippians chapter 4, it's, in, it's an hopeful and encouraging chapter. Now you may think, well, yeah, it, it can be, but how does that apply to me? Well, here are some ways that you can look forward Looking forward in from Philippians chapter 4. Who likes peace? Peace and quiet. You know, there's more that you like peace and quiet, surely. So you like sometimes just to sit and to be peaceful. The moments when your children are all out the house, your husband's gone out to the football, and you're sat there in quietness. Enjoying peace. But Philippians chapter 4, I believe, talks about an inner peace. An inner spiritual peace. We live in a world where it is full of anxieties. It's full of problems. It's full of this. Our weekly days at work, those that are teachers, those that work in different industries, we all have anxieties, don't we? Is Ofsted going to turn up? That's an anxiety, isn't it? They're not due to turn up, are they, Matt? Hope not. Hope not. But things like that that cause us anxieties can be quite painful. And sometimes we just need to come before God and we really need to give them all of those anxieties, all of those problems, so that we can have an inner peace. By letting go of our anxieties and trusting God through prayer, you can experience a deep sense of peace that beats all situations. For some of you, you may be waiting for medical things to come back. You may be waiting on news of jobs. You may be waiting on news of what is happening to your children. They are all anxieties that if we don't give them to God, can wear us down. We've all been there. I love it when Fran looks at Mick Black. Isn't that right, Mick? Very true. You need to give them to God. That deep sense of peace that can transcend all circumstances. Some of you may be saying, I've got some things I really need to give to God in prayer. So last night I was driving back through the centre of London. Never again. It was full of supporters from Real Madrid and uh, the, is it Borussia Dortmund. And uh, they were all enjoying themselves. They looked so happy. But the traffic was just horrendous going round Marble Arch that way. So never again am I driving down there. But they were so happy. Of whether the Borussia Dortmund team are a bit more happier this morning, I don't know. But sometimes we need happiness, don't we? We need to be joyful. Don't you just hate it, those people? Joel's one of these. I don't hate you, Joel. But Joel is one of those people. He is happy all of the time. <laughs> Avril's looking at me. That's not quite true, I don't think. You're happy all the time, aren't you? Back to 
like to think so. I know Matt Jenkinson is happy all the time. Not all the time. Oh my life, men, help me out here. Andrew Piper, you're happy all the time, aren't you? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. <laughs> Let's try the ladies, shall we? <coughs> Are you happy all the time? No. Is there anybody that's happy all the time? Have you ever met those people that are happy all the time? Don't they annoy you? <laughs> Don't they just get you down? You're in the deepest grumps. You're, you've really had enough of you know, the day. And they're going, I'm okay. How are you today? And you're going, shut up once more. <laughs> once more. But sometimes, as Christian people, we focus on the negative. We focus on the not joyful things. Things that are happening in our lives. Things that are happening in our church. Things that are happening in our community. In Philippians 4a, I believe that if we shift our values and our focus to the positive aspects of life, such as what is true... What is noble and good can cultivate a more joyful outlook. There is nothing wrong with being joyful. Just remember, whatever is true, whatever is noble and good can cultivate a more joyful outlook. Have you ever, ever had those days when you really need some extra strength? Those days where I've really got to get up and do this, I've really got to go there, but there is no strength there. And I'm not talking about a physical strength, I'm talking about a spiritual strength. In Philippians 4, 13, it says, it says this, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, verse 13 says, God is greater than my highs and my lows because he gives me strength. I want to say to you this morning, God is greater than your highs. God is greater than your lows. He is greater than anything that we can do. Because he will give you the strength to continue. Even in difficult times, drawing strength from faith can give you a resilience to persevere. I remember my, my Sunday school teacher, my wife here said, Dorothy Grinnell, and she would simply say to you, keep going, keep going, keep going. She said other things as well. <laughs> but there was times in my life where I have been low. There are times in my life where I feel I haven't had the strength to keep going, to keep persevering. But God simply says to me, Carl, keep going. Keep persevering. Keep pushing forward. Because if we can do that, then God will give us everything that we need. Especially in the hardest times of our lives, in the lowest times of our lives, keep persevering. Have, ask for that strength in God. But how do we put this into action? How do we put this, this, this chapter from Philippians chapter 4 into action? I believe that we've got to practice gratitude. Philippians 4, verse 6, it says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Taking time each day to reflect on the things you're grateful for can boost your happiness. 
My dad, before he passed, he left, left some very wise words. My dad always gave us wise words, some that I couldn't explain to you this morning. But these things I can. Because my dad would say, these are the three things that have kept my life going and on track. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And whatever circumstance you face, keep loving him. Love your wife or your husband, even when they annoy you. Keep love. My life then just looked at his wife then. <laughs> love your family. That was his three things. Love God. Love your wife. Love your family. They're the three things we can be great and present gratitude with, aren't they? They're the things that we can say to God, you know, these are the things that bring me happiness. It's very hard, isn't it, if we're going to put this other thing in, uh, in Philippians, where we've got to focus on the good. We live in a world that always focuses on the bad. The news always presents the negative. Very rarely the positive. And I wanted to say to you this morning, Leicester South, the core of the Salvation Army, if we are a looking forward core, then we have to make a conscious effort to surround ourselves with positive influence and uplifting attitudes. Yes, I get it that we, we as a church family, we will fall out, we will have our disagreements, but sometimes we have to be the bigger people. Sometimes we have to be the one that presents, that focus on the good aspects of everything that we do. And if we focus on the good things, then we can develop a prayer life. I'm a faithful intercessor. That's my sessional name. And boy, over the 25 years, that's been hard to keep faithful and interceding. But a regular prayer and communication with God can be a source of strength and comfort. When was the last time? When was the last time you had that communication through prayer with God? Develop a prayer. But the one thing I want you to remember about Philippians chapter 4 is this. It's a message of hope and encouragement. Did you hear that? It's a message of hope and encouragement. And by embracing its message, you can cultivate a more positive and joyful outlook on Just remember that God is greater than your highs and your lows. Thank you, Caleb. Then you will experience God's peace, the peace of God. Then you will experience God's peace, the peace of God, which exceeds anything we can understand, anything we can understand. Which exceeds anything we can understand, anything we can understand. His
Thank him for all he's done. Let's close our, our meeting off. Are you ready for a cup of tea? Yeah. And we're going to sing 573, Be Thou My Vision. Let us stand and sing this song through. And I think we're using the modern tune to this, aren't we? So if we just follow Trevor, that would be really great. Thank you. Let us stand. <laughs>
thy God be the God that is ruler of all.